In the previous video, we had a look at the various serialization methods used in coherence. We also had a look at the concept of portable object format in detail. In this video, we'll take a look at how to load the coherence cache after the cache server starts. Before testing the application, you should download the preloading.zip file, extract it, and then import it to your workspace. In the data package, open the cache preloader.java class. I've already installed a H2 database, and we will fetch the records from the customer table in the coherence cache. We'll start two cache servers, and each of these servers will fetch data according to the customer ID. The first cache server will get the records whose keys values are odd, and the second cache server will get records whose key values are even. How do we define which cache server will store odd values and which server will hold even values? The member set parameter defines a cluster's members. In this example, the member set dot size will return the value 2, as we'll have two cache servers, and the member variable holds the cache server's information, such as the member ID and the machine name. This method is the simplest way to use the cache member ID and any other member information in the Java code. However, it can be prone to error. For example, if one of the cache server's status is storage disabled, our code will not work properly. Please note, you can use the Coherence API to perform various operations for fetching member and cluster information in the Java code. In this example, this member ID and the total number of servers is displayed using the print in Java command. It's imperative to know these two values, as we can use them to easily distribute database records across the cache servers. In the select statement, we use the mod method to direct the member to fetch one part of the data. While executing the query, we'll insert the database record into the buffer with each iteration. Note that we do not write the database record into the cache. If we call the put method for each step, there will be some significant overhead for network and memory I.O., especially in the case of replicated and distributed caches. Instead, you could use the put all method to perform a bulk load scenario. To start the preloader, create a run configuration that runs the cache preloader class. The procedure is the same as shown previously, and in this case, there will be two preloaders. We must start the two cache preloaders at approximately the same time. This is because the first server might exit from the cluster, in case the second server joins the cluster after a certain amount of time lapses. In this example, we have two cache preloader processes, and they load data from our database into the cache. As you can see, this cache server's ID is 2. Remember that we have two cache servers in this example, and this one loads half the data, six objects in this case. As you can see in the other console, this cache server's ID is 1. In this video, we have learned how to populate cache data efficiently from underlying data storage in parallel. In the next video, we'll take a look at querying a data grid.